Hi everyone, welcome to the third session of the D -D 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 Colonial Methodologies video series where we speak to extra English al 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 alumni about bringing these approaches to their own, own, own writing and research. In today's session, we're going to be d -d 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 discussing Black and Asian British writing. So thinking through the m m manifold voices that um, em 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 emerge into the British literary sphere, uh, not just after periods of um, d d diasporic migrations from South Asia, the Caribbean, Af 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 African nations, um, etc., but also voices and people and p p p p presences that existed prior to that, um, including even intellectuals and writers that may 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 only have spent a short 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 time in Britain, but. Um, contributed heavily to socio-cultural and li 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 literary thought here. And just to start us off, before we bring on our p -p 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 panelists, who are the amazing duo of alumni um, um, Am Am Amber Reed and um, current undergraduate li 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 Libby Jabay. Um, but just before we bring them on, I just wanted to say that across the country right now, there is a sudden desire for an aesthetic, an aesthetic de 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 decolonization, where the word itself has become um, somewhat institutionalized, and there is a p p p p p p p push to get these n n n new names, these new approaches. And just wanted to say before we start that something does not become um, n n n n n new once the institution or a government claims that it is. Um, black, 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 black British writing has always existed in, 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 in the UK, and so have people who work on work on this writing. These um, plural narratives and their p -p 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 presence in both literature and academia have always been here, and have always been um, Im 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 important and p powerful. And it is such necessary work that they're doing and that you're doing, um, and. It is part of a long tradition of this and and anti-racist um, radical li 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 literary thought um, work and c c c criticism. And finally, um, there have always been people who have um, been ch ch championing Black British writing th 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 throughout the last few decades. Um, Stuart Hall's role in the est 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 establishment of the initial discourse. Um, Paul Gilroy, who teaches to this day, um, all of these scholars, Margaret Busby and her immense role in p -p 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 publishing, creating publishing houses and um, c -c -c curating these words. Um, c -c 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 Sushila Nashta, who founded um, Wasafiri, making um, this writing and this criticism reach um, new p -p 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 parameters of um, accessibility and r r r readership. Um, Bernardine Varisto, who, after winning the B -B -B Booker, has constantly been bringing black authors to the s spotlight. So what I'm saying is that this is not some 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 something that is suddenly valid because um, institutions have decided that it's valid, but it's something that has always always had a p -p 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 powerful presence in literature and ac ac academia. And it's the curriculums that have ignored these works that are inadequate. So that's enough from me. And I just wanted to welcome Amber Reed and Libby Gervais, who will be introducing the, 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 themselves in a minute. Libby, I'm third year. Um, I have an interest in post-colonial studies, um, particularly um, Black British writing, um, but also in visual culture. So I do a lot of studies on um, film and TV and adaptations as well. Um, I'm also taking um, African narratives module this term and took acts of writing module last term. My dissertation is ex an extension from an essay actually I did last year on in my adaptations module. Um, which was on the BBC's adaptation of Zadie Smith's NW. Um, and for my dissertation, I, <laughs> at very early stages, I hope that other dissertation students are feeling the same way I am. Um, 
And I'm interested in situating adaptations within the social agendas of public service broadcasters and the idea of like Black British TV carrying a burden of representation. I sort of go back to something that Bell Hook said, um, that visibility does not mean that something is inherently radical or progressive. So that's something I'm exploring in my dissertation, continuing with Zadie Smith, um, looking at some other adaptations and maybe even some adaptations of um, things that have happened in history, like bringing in uh, Steve McQueen's small acts, et cetera. I'm Amber. Um, I was, last year, I was on the uh, MA Literary Studies and I specialised in post-colonial and global cultures. Um, my dissertation on that actually looked at kind of tracing attitudes towards immigration and race in Britain, um, kind of working from the uh, Windrush scandal as a starting point, I suppose. And I kind of used Sam Selvon's The Lonely Londoners, uh, Andrea Levy's Small Island and Bernadine at Vistro's Girl, Woman, Other to kind of, I guess, pinpoint three moments in British history in which kind of uh, attitudes have either stayed the same or changed to a certain extent, but basically exploring how I think education in Britain in general does a pretty terrible job at... Um, educating like British public and about colonization and about colonies and about anywhere other than Britain really <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah so that and I'm also kind of interested in Windrush literature in particular but um, visual cultures is something that I'm also quite interested in in general um, so yeah and at the moment I'm actually working um, at UWE, um, but I'm in the law and business faculty so I'd say the first thing I wanted to, 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 to talk to um, talk to you about is something I'd mentioned earlier in the int int introduction to the video, um, and that's on the trajectory from inst 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 institutional exclusion to institutionalization of Black and Asian British voices in in um, um, in university and school curriculums. Um, and now, especially across the last 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 year, um, yeah, I mean, even last few years, if 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 if, if, if you're um, ascribing a wider path to it, um, you start you're starting to see lists like um, you know top five b -b 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 black authors that you must read, um, you know that that kind of you know top five b -b 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 black British writers, top ten, um, and I was wondering this adjacency to c -c 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 canon formation, this um, creation and like c -c 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 cultural curation of a separate black british canon do you think that's something we as students and researchers should avoid avoid doing yeah i think it's interesting that a lot of the time when people try to sort of diversify reading lists or create kind of just uplift black and asian voices in britain they often i think label it as a particularly like contemporary thing as if people yes. Um, you know, Bain writers didn't exist before like 1950. And I think a lot of the time it's kind of, you know, modules that look at sort of early Renaissance or medieval or, you know, any period of time really could do kind of a better job at including a more diverse range of authors uh, sort of together in the same sphere. Um, and then I think that would really lead quite nicely into being able to kind of interpret and analyse, I guess, traditional uh kind of cool texts in a kind of um you know kind of see the spaces in there where there are at times discussions about colonization and imperialism and you could kind of feed those texts off of each other quite nicely I think. Quite um similarly I was thinking about um modules that aren't necessarily um very like peer specific so last year doing adaptations um there's an opportunity to bring in BAME creatives in a in a range of different ways that aren't necessarily just focusing on um, race and culture, but just because they're good texts that can be put in there and will broaden people's understanding of, of race and culture as a result, but also just looking at it as an adaptation in its own right. Um, I think on that module, we looked at Grinda Chad at the end, um, in terms of a transcultural cinema, um, but BAME voices didn't come in before that. And I think 
you can include work because it's good work and I think when there's such an absence you almost need to overcompensate and think does this have to be this writer director or could like the same learning outcomes and more be achieved if it was a BAME creative instead? So I'm just going to take us take us back to the um, our, our archives. Um, the first session of of the, of the series, um, we spoke about the archival encounter with um, um, with with the South Asian context. Um, one thing I definitely say now is that there are already p -p -p projects and uh, curated collections that um, in in in. <laughs> In, in, investigate the positionality of b b b b b b b b Black and um, Asian Britons in the UK, and these are sounding boards. These are places that you could you could you could um, just visit now. Just um, have 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 a look around. Um, for example, I've, I'll, I'll 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 include some links that you can look at. Um, for instance, the m m m m m m m making Britain project which um, studies the South Asian pre 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 presence, the Black British Archives on, 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 on Instagram, which um, repurposes found and um, archived footage into shorter, shorter clips. The BFI and the pre 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 British Library also have selections of older television programmes, n n news broadcasts, etc. that um, also help create a pre 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 picture of not just multicultural Britain but also the um, p -p 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 pervading um, at, 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 at attitudes towards um, attitudes towards multicultural Britain at, 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 at various times in history. Now um, both of you are very aware of, of, of the importance of um, f -f -f photography videos and b -b visual cultures in reinstating and uh, re-exploring um, Black and Asian b b b b b British histories and presences. Um, and I know both of you work work, work um, with those mediums in d d d d different ways. So I was just wondering, how do we navigate the archives then as, as a taught scholar? Um, where, where do we begin? And especially with visu 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 visual media, how, how would you go, 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 go about this? Kind of my approach to this has been is something that i've been doing quite recently as well kind of in the preparation for applying for phds um i've been looking at kind of visual cultures um but i think it's it's quite interesting to me that i've noticed at the moment a lot of kind of um heritage organizations and kind of places with archives are kind of putting out phds and stuff in this area and i think um, I mean, it's definitely a good thing, don't get me wrong, but I do also think like there's an element of it being like like a mass sort of panic of like, we should be seen to be doing something. I'm conscious that I think at times it can almost be something that's done to tick boxes, I think, and not to actually hopefully kind of change things. Um, I guess the other point that I would make in approaching archives, I think, is is always important to kind of question, I guess, especially with images, maybe why they've been taken and the sort of context behind them. Because I think that can be quite interesting a lot of the times. Because um, I know like with the sort of Getty images archives and stuff like that, a lot of those images were taken kind of for news purposes and the ways that they might have been used, I guess, in the British media is probably at times not necessarily in the best light often to probably like kind of support Daily Mail-esque stories about immigrants. It's a really new thing for me but something I'm really interested in. I'm actually doing a um, internship currently as a citizen curator um, and I'm working with PK Porthcurno Museum of Global Communications and, wow. and exploring the British um, telegram and communications um, overseas so I'm literally learning skills of how to approach archives which is very strange as well given Covid um, so so far I'd say to really use the experts that know how to navigate the archives to be able to find the things that you want to find. Um, really interesting what Amber was saying with um, visual culture and photographs um, because I also think it's very important to think of, of photographs context, like who is actually taking the photo and the power dynamic that goes on with that um, can really inform your research because 
a camera isn't an objective lens it is subjective and someone is framing that so it, that's always an interesting thing to add to studies um yeah I I'm not entirely sure whether I'm going to use it for my dissertation um in terms of like photographs um I guess some sort of historical context would definitely benefit from archival research it's difficult going back further in time because there aren't very good um records of things that were shown on tv because they didn't feel like a need to at the time to document um what was being shown exactly and when so trying to find old videos is quite quite difficult i mean even recent stuff is quite hard to find i was trying to find stuff from early 2000s and i've now discovered the vimeo is actually quite good for finding old tv series <laughs> as well like when you're looking at archive especially with this kind of topic you have to think about the absences and what's missing as much as you have to think about what's there um difficult to do but yeah someone has chosen for those kind of things to be documented and for other things not to be essentially yeah i think i think that's actually really interesting as well kind of in the context particularly of like i was saying like the kind of heritage organizations that are doing research in this at the moment is that I think there's probably likely to be a lot of absences that are possibly just as interesting as what's actually there a lot of the time. Um, I mean, especially if you look at something, you know, like the National Trust or those kind of buildings, sort of massive stately buildings in Britain that have oftentimes be, you know, inspired by kind of exploration, colonial explanation, exploration, <laughs> or, um, you know, kind of actually at times built by people by colonial immigrants and that kind of thing it's um and those absences kind of feed into a lot of the culture of kind of silencing i think in britain a lot of the time that's fantastic thank you um and now in reference to in reference to the next question i'm just going to um quickly read a ha 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 quote um um from his essay the rainbow sign but despite all of this, um, some kind of identification with England remains. It is strange to go away to, 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 to the land of your ancestors, to, 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 to find out how much you have in c c c common with people there. Yet at the same time, realise how, how British you are. It isn't that you wanted to find out, but it is part of what you do find out. You look forward to g g getting back. You think often of England and what it m means to you. And you think often of what it means to be b b b b British. And that's really stayed stayed with me um, when, I guess, when thinking of trying to d d d d d define what um, b b b b b b Black British writing means. And I then, I, I guess, to me, it becomes um, the transformative and uh, t -t 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 transgressive Britishness of the writing. That in writing, in the act of writing, the... <laughs> literary and c c c cultural sphere of Britain has been influenced, has been has been disrupted, um, has been ch 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 changed. And I guess that's partly what I wanted to ask you. Firstly, um, I guess what is Black British writing to, 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 to you? What what makes what makes um, what makes it? Because I don't think it's it's you know it's not a genre um, by by any strict d d d d d d definition. And the second question, I guess, would be um, there are so many voices in p p p p p p post um, Windrush, post b b b b b b b World War II Britain specifically. Um, and I guess, how do we look at all of these voices together? The writings of um, b b b b b b b people who have migrated once, um, d d d d d d double diasporas, dual, dual, dual heritage citizens, those clinging to an archaic and pre-colonial idea of the homeland. There is no one way to be the diaspora, is that what is what I conclude there. And do you think then there has been, and this is quite, I guess this is quite a um, tricky one, um, but do you think that there has become an ideal or idealized type of um, black British writing? Or do you think and is it necessary to convey all of these voices um, in one genre? I would say that the um, multiplicity in the writing, I think you can view it in a really 
positive way of like occupying new spaces and being like a multifaceted person rather than thinking of like a split dichotomy um I mean, this is something I think about a lot because I am, I'm mixed race. My grandparents are actually Windrush generation. Like even the examples you've brought up of like um, Hanish Kreshi, Kreshi and um, I love The Buddha of Suburbia. I think it's one of my favorite books. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, just thinking about like the mixed race characters that come up that are also um, often identified as black British um, or just as put into categories black rather than having like a dual heritage. Um, I think there's a lot more research to be done on that. I really want to go on and research um, mixed race identities in literature. So, yeah. I suppose with this one, I mean, I think it's kind of, it's, for me, I think it's interesting because with the kind of diaspora voices and that kind of thing, it, there's often, I think, a time like in literary criticism um, and kind of book reviews, and I guess that can extend to media as well, that kind of does try to uh, enforce a very like narrow idea of how um, diaspora should act or behave or anything like that, really, and kind of with the burden of representation as well. I mean, I know kind of like with Hanif Qureshi's The Buddha of Suburbia, there was a lot of kind of outcry from both sides and a real kind of feeling that he either had, you know, written about Asian British culture, either in a good way or really not in a good way. Actually look at the reception of these texts a lot of the time, because I think that can be quite telling about how people kind of perceive race in Britain. And I think oftentimes it is a very singular and kind of narrow perception of what that could be. Um, Thank you. No, yeah. that that was really um, that was really good answer, and that really um, actually b b b b b b b b b brings us on to um, onto the next question, the final question actually, um, which is, I guess, the challenges of writing and p p p p p p publishing in Britain as a as 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 as, as an ethnic minority. Um, how do we analyze and approach, I guess, what, how do we analyze and approach as literary cri 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 critics um, when cultural p p producers from this background have um, obstacles in, 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 in publishing, in producing, in acting, in, in, in singing, in, in, all, in all of these, um, in, in, in all of these ways? And I guess cons 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 consider here that the p p p production and publishing industries are modes of curation um, with 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 their own biases, with 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 all the pitfalls that comes with the idea of curation itself. How then can we? I don't want to say be more activist. How can we be more supportive um, in in our research in and in acknowledging that? Um, these these biases and these 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 methods of curation exist i think kind of with my own research i guess i've always been quite interested in kind of including i guess the literary production history behind a lot of texts um in my ma dissertation that was actually something i focused on quite a lot because i think a lot of the time it's it's quite interesting how you know with windrush immigration and the literature that was produced around that time, writers that had collaborated with the BBC. Um, and it's interesting. Oh. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it was the BBC's sort of Caribbean Voices, I think they did a programme um, that used to be broadcast over in the Caribbean. And I know that Sam Selvon worked uh, with them. And I think it's, it's quite interesting because it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you look at the production behind that, are the ideas that these writers are portraying kind of a, I guess, sort of sanitised version of the truth sometimes. And I don't think that that's always the case, but I think, you know, is were these texts privileged and became popular because they presented immigration and race in Britain in a way that was digestible for white readers as much as it was for um, sort of the diaspora? With what Amber was saying um, in terms of literary production, I'm taking quite a, um, a similar approach in my dissertation with um, what public service broadcasters are doing and how they um, choose what to put on and um, 
in regards to Zadie Smith looking at the Black British um, season that was um, put on November in 2016, but NW wasn't actually a part of that, even though it was um, released alongside it. Um, and I know Mark Lawson for The Guardian wrote how he thought that it, NW wasn't celebratory enough um, of multicultural Britain for it to be included. So yeah, I think a lot about the curation of um, of I guess just Black British identity and history. Um, and I've been following the work of um, Dr. Clive James Wonka, who actually visited Exeter and I um, was lucky enough to chat with him. And he uses um, Steve Neal's ideas of cultural verisimilitude and generic verisimilitude, meaning the interaction, engagement with blackness, um, like you said, sort of palatable to, to white um, audiences as well and how there's often an, an excess I think he says of blackness um, to warrant um, the engagement with the identity as in white people thinking like oh yeah that adheres to my perception of black identity so yeah that that's that's right and then it just perpetuates um, those really dangerous images and stereotypes um, yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. Um, this has been a really an 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 enlightening um, what twenty thirty minutes. Um, so yeah, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much for having. So that was a really exciting chat with um, L L L L Libby and Amber, and I hope it was helpful. And um, j j j j just to finish us off. Um, I just want to say it's really, really important that we look at these presences, perspectives, and stories, um, regardless of what you're work, work, working on. Um, these aren't just narratives suddenly placed into um, into history. They were always um, they were always there, affecting and um, being affected by what you may see as the as the canon. And I think that is something that really should be t t t t t t t t taken away with you today. Um, to not consider this as, um, you know, hidden his 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 history and literature, or a new method method of reading, but something that you can um, track and trace productively across decades. Very very much worth considering. Thank you, and um, stay tuned for the next one in. March.